Hey guys, so for the release of version 3.1 we decided to make a very short um, video showing you some of the changes we have made. Of course we did a lot of under the hood development, so fixing a lot of bugs and improving some kind of things, but we decided to show you some of the more visual stuff that we changed and I'm just going through all the features. There will be upcoming tutorials really showing you what we changed and how you can handle this in the future. So don't worry, this is really just to give you an idea of what we changed. So let's dive right in. So let's start off with the highlighting. First of all, you can see the post-process highlighting is now glowing and you can select every color you want, not only the colors we defined earlier. The next one here is our mesh highlighting. We have different options for this, especially cool for the Oculus Quest. And a completely new feature is we have now the possibility for material highlighting. So you can basically create every material effect you like. We have some uh, prepared some functions for you to use. And I will create a tutorial on how to use this later this month. So the next thing is our new object window here. So you can see we have added this nice frame with its animations and you have it for text and you can have also the possibility to add a picture to it. And there are two possibilities. You can position them automatically like with this lamp here. If you move it, you can see it tries to find a position that looks nice for the current pawn. And all of this is fully dynamic, but you have also the possibility to manually define where the image should be and where the description should be. And also the description is now really easy to modify compared to previous versions. Here in this example, we only have an image for the chair and in the planned example, we only have a text. So all of this is fully um, modifiable by you. The next thing, and this I think is a great one. In the previous version, you were only able to track the component track angular 360 degrees. And now we modified it, we changed it, and you're able to really move around as often as you want to. So just put a larger number in here. And this should work without any problems now. So this will give you much more flexibility with the system. And as you can see, it's working nicely. I'm able to drag it around as often as I want to. The next one is our material for we use for ghosts and for the snapping. We have modified it because with the old material you can see all the inner triangles and this looked really weird. We now have a material that is translucent but hides automatically all the inner triangles and you can modify this to your likings, make it a little brighter. Right now it's a little dark because I think it's cool. And the next thing is a little organization thing. We have added this component tag to search and we added this to all our components because in previous versions they were doing the same but they were called different and this made quite some confusing situations. So now everything is named in the, in the right way and it should be less confusing. The next thing we have added a new settings menu with a lot of placeholders where you can insert your own uh, menus. We have also added some, for example, this audio, it's fully functional and this settings here. You can use this in desktop and in VR and really apply different graphic settings. So all of this is fully functional and you can expand it if you want to. For example, here I have downscaled my resolution. And if I had auto detect, it will set them to the max my PC can actually handle. So this works really nice and I think it's a really great addition. The next thing is we have added a new widget. You can find it in our map example and it is for changing levels. So now you have also a palette where you can change the levels, not only our menus. And yeah, this is also a really cool feature because you don't need a menu, you can just drop a palette and you can also spawn it dynamically like all the other palettes. In here we have four different levels. If I want to add a new one, I just 
select the component UI palette and add a new one here in the palette section, for example, the spectator one. And the information is pulled from the info level. And I'm going quickly to show you how you can change this. So if you're in your info level from the level itself and you scroll all the way down, you have this palette. So this is the little image we have just seen. And of course, the level key is the name that is displayed here in this menu. So for example, if we did a quick change and change the name and the image, you can see that the little menu will al automatically be updated. Here we have our five new levels. We can select any of them and go to that level. We also, while we're here, we changed the palette system. Really um, like the new design, it's much slimmer and this uh, transparency mode. It may not work for what you are doing. If, if the transparency mode is not good in your case, you can just set another material here, but I like the semi-transparent design of it and the widget. Of course, it's fully opaque, so no distractions there. It's only for the background. We also went through and changed a lot of the widget design. So as you can see, we have a nice smooth scrolling now. We have this separators. Everything looks much cleaner. And we also changed a lot under the hood. And Ansgar is going to create a complete tutorial about the new system workflow here. Just going to sh show you some of the design changes we have made. Since a lot of people have asked how to enter the multi-user in VR, we have added this new palette. So it's, it's just a preset with all the elements that were already there, but we created a ready to use palette for you. You can use in VR, of course, also in desktop, but in desktop, you can also just use this one here. It's doing the same, but the other one is really targeted for use in VR. So I uh, added some new examples to the action map to showcase some different things. Here I have created a ball throwing machine with the gaze view and I'm really really suck at this so let's uh, <laughs> let's switch to another mechanic one that Ansgar created and I think is really cool it's the car component so it's basically a way to let the pawn enter a vehicle it could be anything could be an airplane could be a ship and the pawn will be locked to the other actor and you can try this out in this very simple example here, but only if you're uh, immune to motion sickness. Luckily, I am, but <laughs> I think a lot of people will get motion sickness from this here because it's, yeah, it's, it's really hard if you're not used to it. But again, it's just a great example and you can do a lot of things here. Our community member, Matthew, or Matt, has created an awesome plugin and he's shared it for free on our Discord. So you can check this out. In there he has a very, very cool design for a uh, vehicle where he used the valve to actually um, as a wheel, as a sterling wheel and here to speed up or down. And again, I tried this. <laughs> yeah, I'm really not that good need to I, I don't think I was able to finish this course but it's a really great example on how you can use all this in elements together and I would advise you to download his examples the next thing and a lot of people really waited for this is the index support so we this really took a long of lot of time to actually get the index controller working and auto detect them even if you're using the Vive with the index controllers but all of this should work now one thing we didn't integrate is like the grip pressure or separate finger tracking for the index controllers because all the other headsets don't have anything similar. But you can do all the other things 
you can do with a normal controller. And of course, if you want to change the behavior, you have this data asset here where you can just define your own controller presets. The next thing, and I'm sure a lot of you know this, you, if you try to grab something that has also the select component, you often accidentally opened up the select menu, although you just wanted to grab it. So like in this example here. And this was really annoying. And the way we have solved this now is you now have the possibility to find if an object is touchable with the hands or if it is only selectable with the laser. All of this can be found in the component select. And here we have the supported select sources, distanced for the laser and touch if you want to touch it with the glove. So if we remove the touch here and only have distance, now I only can use it with the laser. And of course also the new integrated laser from the gloves. But if I get closer and want to grab it, I'm not accidentally opening the selection menu again. So this is really cool. We also did rework all the pawns and this is a too huge to actually talk about all the changes, but Ansgar will create a tutorial out of this. And one thing I wanted to quickly show you is that we have now a little mobile pawn. And if we open up the info palette, you can see the pawn mobile is already set here. So the next thing we need to do to actually use this is go in our project settings, type in touch and use mouse for touch. Then we open up our player controller main and in there we select the force mobile. And now if I hit play on the PC, I can simulate this mobile touch. And of course, if you would build this application for a tablet or a mobile phone, you can use the touch to actually move around, to drag if you hold it. And if you tap anywhere, you will go to this position. So I think this is a really powerful addition to the core framework. And more information on the topic of pawns and widgets will be followed by a tutorial from Ansgar. So this was the first time we actually did a what's new tutorial for your new version. Let me know in the comments if you like this uh, kind of concept to get a quick overview of what we changed. Thanks for watching and I'm going to talk to you on Discord.